So now we actually need to start to make use of that. And it's pretty straightforward to use that class uh, and it's very useful as well. One of the things that you'll find out as I have um, going through this is that textures, which we can use to, to basically put a, an image into um, a geometric shape like a square or a triangle or whatever, um, those textures have to be something called power of two. And it means they have to be equal sized. So they have to be 128 by 128 pixels or 512 by 512. You can't have 200 by 100. Um, it doesn't like it because a texture is actually, when you um, bind a texture is actually loaded into video memory to make things nice and fast, it has to have that unique size. Um, now, normally if you have an image, cause we're gonna have like a ship and our ship is gonna be a rectangle shape rather than um, an exact square. So that could be a bit awkward. Now, rather than having to write the code ourselves, we can use this nice little class that Apple have given us um, and it does all this work for us. So this takes an image um, of any dimensions and makes sure that the texture that it creates is a power of two texture. So the OpenGL is happy and we don't have to worry about that ourselves. So very, very useful thing to have there. So what we're gonna do um, is we're gonna add to the code. So this is inside our init with coder again, underneath the code for um, initializing OpenGL. And in here, we're going to basically init our images. Okay, so we're gonna have a, a player ship image, um, first of all. So I'm gonna flick back into my um, dot header file, which I use Alt, Command, and Up Arrow for that to make it nice and quick. And first of all, I need to make sure that I import um, the Texture2D class, which we need to do there. And then I'm going to create a Texture 2D type, and it's going to be a pointer, and I'm going to call it player ship. Okay, save that, and go back into our .m file. So what I can do in here now is I can say player ship equals, and we need to allocate um, memory for this particular object. So I'm going to say it's Texture 2, and we need to allocate memory. And then it has a method called init with image, okay, which is a really useful one. And all we have to do is pass it a UI image. Um, so again, I'm going to do square brackets, UI image, and I'm going to go with image named on this. And uh, the actual graphic I'm going to be using is called player.png. It could be whatever the graphic is that you want to use. And then I'm going to close that off. Now, before I forget, because I'm actually allocating memory here, and I'm not going to be doing anything with it until the, the program ends, just to to sort of make sure we're using good best practice. I'm gonna go down here and I'm just gonna make sure that um, I actually release player ship when it's no longer needed. Okay, just so we don't leak memory. Okay, so I've gone and actually now defined my player ship and it's of an object called player.png. Um, bit of a problem here in that I don't actually have that file inside my project to use and that's where it's gonna be looked for. So I'm gonna sort that out. Uh, I shall create a new group and I'm gonna call this images. And in here, I'm going to import a, an existing file I have. And this is just gonna be a file I've got in my graphics directory called player.png. So I'm gonna add that into my project and I want to make a copy of it. And there we have it. And if we have a click on that, there's the ship. So that's the ship that within hopefully just a few minutes we will have drawn in the middle of our iPhone screen um, and it will form the basis of our project going forward and it will also signify the end of this particular tutorial. So going back into our code, I've defined the ship um, just here, but now I need to actually get it on the screen. So again, that's a relatively straightforward thing to do. Uh, so we go down to our render scene here and we want to, after we've cleared the screen, draw it to the screen. So player ship is the object I'm playing with, and it has a nice method in it called draw at point, which is a core graphics point, an X and a Y coordinate. So we can use CG point make, okay? And I'm gonna say, I want it in the middle of the screen. Um, so I'm gonna have 160 across, and these are floating point numbers, and, and it, it's handy being able to use floating point numbers like this because um, you want to be able to have fractions of a pixel. Not that it can display fractions of a pixel, 
but when you're moving things you don't want to have to move them a whole integer point at a time because that is going to sort of reduce your ability and flexibility to have different speeds of different items. Um, so obviously floats are used a lot throughout the work that we're going to be doing. And I'm going to have it at 240 um, in the Y, so in the middle of the screen. So we'll close that off there. So I'm going to build this now just to make sure I don't get any errors and we don't get any errors. And we should now be in a position where we can actually run this project and see what we get. And there we go. There's our, our little ship in the middle of the screen, not moving yet, but um, it is there and it is being displayed using OpenGL. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Um, I hope you found it useful and interesting. Um, as I say, I'm hoping that my tutorial style will improve with time, um, but please post any questions if you have them. And as soon as possible, I'll be following on with tutorial number two, where we'll be introducing um, a few more of the basics around, okay, if we've got a ship, how can we move it? Um, and also start looking at, at things like creating classes to control our enemies. Because if we use um, the object-oriented approach and have a class that controls different entity types, we can start to give them their own logic and their own movement code and things like that. So it's going to be a bit more around the actual um, project itself and the format we need to take, how we're going to structure our program. Um, but also a little bit about getting that guy moving. So as we tilt the iPhone, we actually see that uh, the ship moves. So join me next time for that. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks very much.